Hi, I'm Dana Brownlee, and I'm here with another quick tip. Today I want to talk about something that's very near and dear to my heart. Back in 2003, I left the corporate jungle and decided to jump into entrepreneurship head first. And now it's a dozen years later, and I've had a successful, thriving business for all that time. But it's been a little difficult as well. So I want to take some time to reflect back on what are some of the sins that I see that newbie entrepreneurs tend to make. Sin number one, not setting aside enough cash reserves. We've all heard the staggering statistics about the high percentage of new small businesses that fail. And my personal hypothesis is that many of those businesses fail not because they could not have been viable businesses or not because the entrepreneurs weren't on the right track or they weren't providing a great service, but because the businesses and the entrepreneurs had not set aside enough cash reserves to support themselves during those first few critical and fragile years. So you really do want to ensure that you set aside a significant amount of money, assuming that you'll need to rely on that fund to, to primarily support yourself for some time during that early ramp up period. In my case, I set aside enough to support myself for 18 months, and that turned out to be just about right. Sin number two is using overly optimistic assumptions during the planning phase. Most entrepreneurs understand the importance of putting pen to paper and developing your business case or business plan, but as they're crunching those numbers, they tend to be overly optimistic in their assumptions without realizing it. I'll give you a few examples. When you're crunching those numbers, you're probably not going to account for your web developer going MIA on you after three months of web development and having to start all over again and incur additional expenses. Or you may not think about one of your key vendors significantly raising prices six months after you start. Or maybe losing a key resource or team member who's on your team because they left a to, to take a better job and now it takes you six months to replace them. So those are just the common day-to-day -day challenges and road bumps that we run into in entrepreneurship, but a lot of times we don't account for them during the planning phase. So you wanna be very conservative in your estimating. Sin number three is trying to do everything yourself in the early stages. You're everything. You're the CEO, you're the marketing person, the graphics person, the web developer, the IT department, sales. And it, it's, I get it. It makes sense early on. Dana, I have no money, no clients, no revenue. I can't afford you know, to pay anybody. Um, but you really may not be able to afford not to pay an expert in certain critical areas. So the things I would ask you to consider are how important is this area to your business? If your website is absolutely critical and that is going to be your main vehicle for gaining clients and getting follow on business, it might be worth it to pay a grad student $20 an hour to develop it as opposed to you are doing it yourself. I'm not saying you have to spend $10,000 on the most expensive website you can find, but it really might be worth it to outsource that. Or it might be worth it to outsource developing some really nice marketing collateral that you'll be using day in and day out to, to get clients. So you really have to think through what's the opportunity cost? What potential clients am I losing? Or what potential revenue am I losing by trying to do it myself when maybe I don't have that skill set? So those are the two questions you want to ask yourself. How What's my skill set relative to that task? You know, do I know what I'm doing? Do I have the experience? And two, how important is it? If it's something that you're not very skilled at and it's really important to your business, think about outsourcing it. And then finally, another sin is not being willing to work like a dog in those early years. I think that too many people jump into entrepreneurship because they think, oh, I'll take summers off and I'm only gonna work nine to two and I'm the boss and nobody tells me what to do. And yeah, that stuff is nice. Certainly I love the autonomy, 
But you have to earn that typically over a period of time. And most entrepreneurs that I talk to say the first few years, they worked like a dog. I mean, they, they just did. And then they developed a much more flexible, much easier schedule further down the line once their business was more established. So those are just a few of the tips or the sins that I talk about in my article. The full article is called The Seven Sins of the Newbie Entrepreneur. It's available on my page on entrepreneur.com. Or if you're interested in additional articles, videos, tips on a range of different issues, please visit my website, um, professionalismmatters.com. There's a resource library tab and that's where we archive all of our resources for you. And then finally, if you're interested in a speaker for an event, please feel free to reach out to us via the website as well and someone from our office will contact you. Thanks so much.